how to be in a state where when we leave we souls will be profitable so when we leave the body we don't want to leave empty handed because you say what you have is your purchasing power right so the money you have is your purchasing power and similarly the spiritual income that you have is like your purchasing power which will ensure what can you get in satyug so if we have enough profit then we can get you know a palace and good life and everything in satyug we can have the good position in satyog so baba says i want you to leave profitable but the thing is that uh you see there is this law that if you invest in the perishable then that investment is also you know gone bad but if you invest in the imperishable then that investment will give you a return yes let's say you know you invested a lot in a project and then that project was in a place which had an earthquake can you get your investment back no similarly baba says if you invest in the perishable then that investment will also perish and if you invest in the imperishable the avinashi then that return of that investment will also be imperishable it will come to you even after this body is over now we have to understand this thing that everything that you see with these two eyes is perishable yes the body the body of those you think you love or whatever you know the physical structures that are there the house the property everything that you have is all perishable but what is imperishable the soul and if you invest in your spiritual growth and you invest in the spiritual growth of others yes so you know um you feed somebody somebody give them very good food give them a give them clean air give them a scope to exercise build spiritual strength but one day the body will you know perish <laughs> but if you gave somebody knowledge or gave somebody the knowledge that baba gives us to be pure happy peaceful build those sanskars then those sanskars will stay with that soul and they will help that soul in the end and baba says that you know these these is this is the only imperishable that will go with you that will and the karma you create by you know giving souls the spiritual sustenance that is the only property that will go with you and this is why baba today says kin ki dabi rahegi dhool mein which means that most of the wealth that people have will be just you know um lying in the mud so you know earlier days people didn't have banks so what did they do they just buried their treasures in the mud so you know underneath so baba says whether it is in the bank or it is underground anyways it is going to stay lying there yes so when there is the time of the end 
will you be able to retrieve that money and use it? First thing that gets closed is the bank, yes? <laughs> so, <laughs> you cannot retrieve anything and use it. And anyways, you see, these days there is no, there is nothing like money. It's all a digital number, right? It's a digital number that you are so proud of that, you know, I have this million or that, uh, that much money. But whatever that number is, if the whole system crashes, then there is no record of that number. <laughs> yes, so once the internet is not working, you have no money at all. And it's just a number which you're carrying around in your head, but it won't exist at that time. So Baba says, all that you have been burying underneath is going to just perish. And then Kinki Raja Khai, which means the government will confiscate everything. <laughs> so in the end, that's what's going to happen. And then third thing is, whatever is left, the thieves will loot away. And you know that uh, whenever there is, a, uh, there is a power cut, so you know, when electricity is lost, and there is, so uh, in times of crisis, this is what happens that there is no supply of electricity. And the first thing that happens is there is a menace of thieves. So, you know, thieves become active and they loot, they just break into everything and they loot everything that's possible. So, that's what's going to happen in the end that the thieves will loot everything. And then, Kinki Ag Jalai, so then there are natural calamities, whether it is fire or earthquake or flood or whatever and everything will be lost in that but you know who will earn an income out of whatever you have those who use it for spiritual benefit at the right time so you know Baba is telling us to use our resources whether it is body, mind, wealth uh, in seva so Baba says you know uh, Baba is always interested that centers are created and seva is done and one must invest in this, one must invest in godly seva and uh, you know every penny that comes to Baba's home that is used in creating you know the spiritual seva so every little penny that comes is used for spiritual seva. It is used for creating the ambience, the resources, uh, you know, bringing souls into the center, giving them the education that you are a soul, remember Baba, or making them soul conscious, making them aware of their spiritual powers and virtues and Baba says, everything that you invest in this spiritual seva, this is the only thing that will give you a return in the end. Because this is the only thing which is invested in creating an imperishable. So, you know, even when a soul uh, leaves the body, so if that soul has received a message that you are a soul and you are at the end and that soul has remembered Baba and has earned some peace, some, some joy, some happiness, then that is going to go with the soul in the end. And Baba says, that is what you will receive at the end. So, you know, the commission of that will come to you at the end. But everything else that you are putting your body, mind and wealth into is not going to give you a return. And I will give you one uh, very interesting example. I think I shared it earlier also, but it is one of the things which has stayed with me. And you know, there is this Mata. So, uh, her son was killed and this Mata is 
this mata is um, her parents had already died the mata's parents and her husband had left her and uh, suddenly you know the son which was very young 12 13 year old son he was killed inside the house when this mata had gone to office so when that mata had come to the center she was in a very you know she was in a state which i do not know we can describe so it was like she had cried so badly that even her tears had dried and she was in a really bad state and she said that i have no one so she said my parents have already died my husband had left and now the only person i had in the whole world my son that son is also gone and uh, she said that uh, you know sister i have not been very spiritual and i am not somebody who uh, knows spirituality a lot like you people do but i have some idea like uh, i have some idea that you know we are souls and we continue even after we leave the body and this and that and in my own way i have talked to my son about some things so she said because uh, i did not think that he would leave the body but i thought you know that my son is the only one for me and i am the only one for my son so i used to tell him that if ever i leave the body then you can continue and you know you can receive help from god and god is there and he guides and he supports and uh, she said that i have been talking about this with my son and now that my son was killed and i uh, came to know that the first thought that came to me was it's good that i had given him this education and maybe you know he was alone at that time and maybe he would have remembered some part of it and i don't know whether he remembered it or not but just thinking about it gives me a lot of peace that at least i had given him something which could have helped him in the last moments she said that i don't remember whatever i had done whatever else i had done for him but this one thing that i had done for him this gives me a lot of peace that maybe he would have remembered god at the last time or maybe he wouldn't have felt alone at the last time so uh, you see that at the end this is the only thing that will matter and baba says whatever body mind and wealth you have invested in uh you know in bringing yourself to soul consciousness and remembrance of baba and bringing others to the realization that you are a soul and remember baba so whatever investment you have made in this whatever investment you have made in supporting the seva that is being done by the centers so you know if you if you have done that then that will stay with you but everything else will perish and this is why baba says i am a very good businessman i am teaching you so baba is called the saudagar the great businessman and baba is teaching us this very good accounting that you know we must know that this is the only investment that will give us a return and everything that you are investing it is investment in the perishable and so that investment will also perish and it will not give a return so this is something and then baba today talks about um you know there's this song that uh, tu pyar ka sagar hai tere ek boond ke pyase hum so baba says in bhakti you have sang this song that you are the ocean of love and we thirst for one drop but baba says actually the correct song is you are the ocean of knowledge 
and we thirst for one drop. And Baba says that I am the ocean of knowledge and if you just get one drop of knowledge, that one drop of knowledge will give you the strength to go into liberation and liberation in life, go into Mukti and Jivan Mukti. What is Mukti and Jivan Mukti? So Mukti is translated as liberation, which means that you will be able to go back home to the world of souls. And Jivan Mukti is translated as liberation in life, which means that you will create for yourself the qualities and the virtues which will enable you to go into the golden age, Swarg or heaven or Satyuk. So Baba says that just one drop of knowledge will enable you to be eligible to go back home and go, back, go to a world of peace, purity and joy which is Satyuk. And what is that one drop of knowledge? So Baba says the one drop of knowledge is you are a soul and you remember your father. Yes, so you are a soul and you remember your father. And you see that um, what is the quality we need to go back home and go back to that um, you know, world of virtues and peace and happiness and prosperity. So, we need to be in a state which is absolutely pure and peaceful so that we can go back home because our home is a world of peace and purity. And if we want to go to Satya, we have to have every divine virtue. So, you have to be cheerful, you have to be patient, you have to be sweet and you have to be pure if you want to go to Satyuk. Now Baba says, how do you create these qualities? With this awareness, if you stay in constant awareness that I am a soul and remember Baba, then you will create these qualities. And Baba tells a very important thing today that always talk to everyone about spiritual matters and not worldly matters. And you know these days when people talk to you, so there is this one uh, brother and he was telling me that, uh, you know, when, when I got married, so I, I broke my ties with my parents. So he said that I did not pay a lot of attention to my parents and I was in my own world and I neglected my parents and uh, I left them. And then slowly I left my brothers and sisters also. And then I thought that, you know, this is my family. And then I did not have any children and uh, my wife also and I, I and my wife also started getting estranged because there was this expectation in me that there should be children and then I blamed my wife that for not having children and this happened. And today I feel that I am alone in the world and this is killing me. So he said that when I get up in the morning, the first thought that I have is I am all alone in the world. And he said, because of this, I have a certain desperation within me and I have been into very immoral relationships also because I feel like there is a vacuum because of this and I underwent therapy and because of that I have started to understand what's the problem within me but I still don't have the solution. So. I underwent therapy, I understood the problem, but I don't have the solution. So you see that there is so much in the world when you look at the physical aspect of life. So if you, if you see that somebody is body conscious, what does body conscious mean? Body conscious means everything. Body conscious means 
you are age conscious you are gender conscious you are health conscious yes you are looks conscious appearance conscious you are everything is body conscious then relationship conscious is body conscious wealth conscious is body conscious attainment conscious is body conscious so every consciousness comes from the body and we live in a world where everything is imperfect so you know every time you are body conscious what are you doing you are bringing more and more sorrow and hurt and pain to yourself so every time you have a thought of body consciousness whether you think about your age whether you think about your health whether you think of, so you know even if there are 100 things good about your health there is one thing which is not okay and then you start thinking about it and then you think about your looks and of course nobody is perfect so then you know you become very conscious of how you look or how you appear and then there is gender consciousness and then so, um, anybody who is in a male body feels why am i in a male body and anybody in a female body feels <laughs> why am i in a female body it would have been better it, if it was otherwise so this is how body consciousness is the root of sorrow and then there is relationship consciousness because people think that you know uh, having good parents good siblings good wife good husband good children is the sign of fortune but what is the concept of a good <laughs> parent child everything in kaliyug so you see in kaliyug all relationships are dysfunctional and uh, you know whatever uh, you look at there is not the best so you know you look at the parents so you go to any psychologist they will tell you your parents are the source of all the problems in your life <laughs> so because you know this is how it is in kaliyug so it is pretty dysfunctional every relationship it is, is dysfunctional and every time you think about uh, the lack of love or support or whatever expectations you had in a relationship and how they are not met it makes you feel hurt and sorrowful and this and that and then baba says attainments and acquisitions and position and power and this and that so there is no limit to it and every time you think about that you feel i'm less than and you know every time you meet a target you feel that you know you will you are nothing in this target and you meet the next one you will be someone and something so baba says that in this body conscious world because this is a world of limitations so when you are body conscious then your feelings your thoughts they are all very limited in their capacity of peace and joy and they are mostly very low vibration thought and feelings you create when you are body conscious and even if you know you have some moments where you feel uplifted because of body consciousness you receive an award somebody admires you appreciates you next time you know you live in the fear that somebody shouldn't put you down and the very next moment that happens and then again you know you fall into that cycle where cycle of appreciation and depreciation right so so one moment you feel appreciated second moment you feel depreciated so that is happening so baba says that you have to have this uh, you know realization that you are a soul and as a soul what are your qualities who is your parent where is your home what is your entire life story so you know just like in body consciousness you have a certain life story of yourself going on inside you so you know just like i talked about that brother and when he shared his life story what is his life story all about how he left his parents how he left his siblings how uh, he didn't have a child how his uh, you know wife uh, got estranged 
So that's the life story we are always thinking about. But Baba says, when you are in soul consciousness, what is your life story? So my life story is that I was there in the soul world, sitting peacefully with my father. And then I came and for 2500 years, <laughs> I enjoyed a life of peace, purity, prosperity. And it was a perfect world and it was a perfect me. And there was no sorrow, no untimely death. And then for another 2500 years, I, although I was losing my qualities till, you know, God was helping me in some way or the other. And now I'm sitting in Baba's lap and Baba is giving me everything that I need to go back to my home and go back to that world of purity and prosperity. So Baba says that be soul conscious. And when you're soul conscious, Think about your timelessness, think about your deathlessness, think about your eternity, think about your original qualities, think about whose child you are, think about whose support you have constantly and think about your life story as a soul, not as a body. And you see, today Baba says something very beautiful, every day in the Murli Baba gives us a glimpse of what our life story is like. And today in the Murli Baba says that when you were in Satyug, your bodies did not need repair. And you know, I will, I, I'll tell you one thing. So there is a friend of mine and she recently shifted into a new house. Okay. And she bought all this new furniture there. And then uh, she had this particular table which she liked very much. Okay, and um, uh, she was very happy when she bought that table. And um, one day she called me at 10 in the night and she was very angry, very bitter and shouting badly. <laughs> so I said, what happened? So she said that, you know, my child of all the places in the house, he had to go and drink milk on that table and then he spilled that milk and that whole table is now gone. So <laughs> the whole thing, you know, that structure is not, not fine now. So I said, you have these people who can come and, you know, clean that whole thing. So it's just a table. Why don't you take some help and they will give you their expert advice and she said no it has crevices and then it has gone into the uh, you know inner realms that milk has seeped into it and I don't like the thought of it also so I said it's okay you just get it repaired it's okay so she said but I don't like it you know it was fresh and new and I loved it and now I don't feel like looking at the table also so then I told her, you have had one operation in your body and you're living with that. <laughs> your body is also repaired. And now you don't like a repair table. So in this old world, you see, everything is repaired. You know, everything. You buy something new, the next day something happens and it needs repair. And this body, you see, uh, the teeth will go, the, there'll be one operation, second operation, or there'll be, you know, some damage to the body and then it will need some medication and something else. And you're always aware that, you know, this body is a repair work, right? So <laughs> it is a repaired thing. So Baba says in Satyuk, the body doesn't go under, doesn't undergo repair. <laughs> so you, even when there is acute old age, your teeth will not fall, your hair will not gray. So you see, uh, after a certain point of time, you need this face massages and then the hair grows old and then you need repair of the hair and this and that. So all this doesn't happen in Satyug. You don't need beautification and repair and maintenance of the body. 
so you know you have these big beauty parlors for all the repair and maintenance and the hospitals for the repair and maintenance of the body so you don't need all of these in satyug so baba says that and baba gives another point about satyug today baba says that you will have a lot of wealth in satyug but you will not be concerned about it so you know you will not be concerned about that wealth you will not be con- so you know there'll be gold and diamonds lying around but you will not be concerned that it'll be lost you will not have to use locks and you know keep them in locks and uh, protect them and you see there is so much concern about whatever people have these days yes and i remember there was this one incident where this mata was saying that uh, you know my i had this necklace this uh, diamond necklace and i had kept it in the almira and uh, my mother in law uh, took it and wore it yes and uh, she said that she did not sell it she was just wearing it but i don't know what happened to me i just lost it and i said that uh you cannot take it without my permission and this and that and i my mother in law said that it was lying around you were not using it also and every day you would just keep guarding it so i said i thought maybe you know i should wear it and move around so that it is also safe and you don't need to guard and it is used also but you see that these days people are so fixated with amassing things and these days you can't even wear gold and diamonds and go out because there's always this uh, fear that it will get snatched or somebody will harm you and you know they'll take the diamond and gold that's one thing but they'll also kill you because of that <laughs> so that's another problem so what you do is you stash away or everything in the locker and then you just Uh, live your life with artificial things but then you are keeping it and you are only guarding it so baba says in satyu you are not concerned about the you know protecting and guarding and doing all of that to the stuff you own so baba says just think about your spiritual journey just think about who you are really what were your initial years like and what was the quality of life you enjoyed in satyug and treta yog and what is your dignity and what is your true way of life because that life of purity peace and prosperity which is all natural natural beauty natural purity natural prosperity that is what you enjoyed and that is what who you really are and gradually you lost all of that but now you have baba and baba is the bestower and baba is with me so i am and this whole life one life i have to spend creating the karma which you know um, again propels me back to that same world where there is abundance and everything so baba says just think about your journey as a soul and think about your constant companion in sangam yoga which is baba and baba says this one drop of knowledge when you know yourself as a soul when you're soul conscious all the time and when you are in remembrance of baba this one drop of knowledge will make you eligible for liberation and liberation in life mukti and jeevan mukti okay om shanti 